So imagine you're walking down the hallways with your basic supplies. You have a tape measure, a protractor, a dart and gun, and a ring stand. What are you gonna do? One answer. Physics! That's right, baby. We're doing physics. Hi, I'm Matt Seglin. Hi, I'm Mike D'Amico. We're AP Physics students at Oxford High School, and today we're here to explain to you the lab projectile motion hit the target. This lab is actually a lot of fun. You get to use a Nerf gun to shoot a dart through a hoop. The purpose of this lab is to use concepts of projectile motion to determine the velocity of a horizontally launched projectile and using concepts of projectile motion hit the designated target. The major concepts of this lab include projectile motion, kinematics, and creating your own procedure. Kinematics is a study in physics in which several equations allow us to describe the motion of objects. Projectile motion is a form of motion in which an object is thrown and moves along a curved path created by the force of gravity. In this lab, you're tasked with creating your own procedure, given only an angle and a few materials. With so many variables involved, you really need to channel your inner physicist to be able to determine them all experimentally and theoretically. Your goal in this lab is to hit the target using a Nerf gun that fires a small toy dart. Your teacher will assign you an angle to fire the gun at, and it's your job to make sure it goes through the hoop on a ring stand by, the distance, by finding the distance it takes to fire the gun at a certain angle and make it hit the target. That's all the information you're given, so where do you start? Think back to our major concepts. We'll have to use the kinematics formulas along with the principles of projectile motion to find a certain distance, while also incorporating our given angle. Let's take it over to Mike for some formulas we have at our disposal. Like Matt said, the equations used in this lab will be that of kinematics and projectile motion. We need to know the velocity of the dart, therefore we will be using the equation v equals d over t, or velocity equals distance over time. Afterwards, we also need to find the distance needed to shoot the dart, incorporating our given angle into the equation. We use the kinematics equation distance equals initial distance plus initial velocity times time plus one half acceleration times time squared, where acceleration is gravity, or 9.81 meters per second. However, you may notice that we are missing the initial velocity for our kinematics equation. To find this, we must use a derivation of the v equals d over t formula. Using principles of triangles and our given angle, we will find the velocity of the y component, which will also serve as our initial velocity. However, this will be explained further in our next section about derivation. Lastly, we need to calculate error. We use the percent error formula, the absolute value of theoretical minus experimental over theoretical times 100. Since this lab is more or less subjective as to whether or not you hit the target, I recommend finding the overall distance away from the gun to the target, say if it was 4 meters, and then subtracting it by how far you actually got to the target. So say if you had 3 meters away from the target, you would do 4 minus 3 over 3, all in meters, times 100 to find your percent error. And those are all the formulas we're going to be using for this lab. Now here's a derivation for finding the velocity of the x and y component. So now that Mike's shown you the two formulas, Vy equals initial velocity times sine theta and Vx equals initial velocity times cosine theta, we have to be able to derive these equations. We do this by constructing a triangle of our situation, or a vector, where the velocity of the dart is 11.11 .11 meters per second, and then we can draw components of this velocity in Vy and Vx, the horizontal component of velocity and the vertical component of velocity. And then we can use SOHCAHTOA or our trigonometric, trigonometric properties to find Vy and Vx. As an example, we can find Vy by using sine 40 and then opposite over hypotenuse because sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So then we write sine 40 equals opposite, which is Vy, and then hypotenuse, which is 11.11 .11 meters per second. And then we use algebra, we multiply sine 40 times 11.11 .11 meters per second and that equals our Vy, where 11.11 .11 is our initial velocity. And we also can have the ability to plug in our angle, or any angle for that matter, not just our certain 140, into this equation. So it's an all-purpose equation that conveniently solves, us, solves our situation, and we use it also for Vx in the same manner we used it for Vy, but instead using cosine. What makes this lab so appealing is the freedom it entails. I know that may sound far-fetched for a physics assignment, but this is an experiment that sets students with the tasks, gives them materials, and says, figure it out. Therefore, everyone's procedure will be different, but will consist of similar key components and an identical final test, which will determine whether or not the dart hits the ring stand. The first component that needs to be found is the dart's velocity when it's fired out of the Nerf gun. This can be accomplished by firing the dart at a fixed distance against the wall, the D component of our V equals D over T equation. The t-component time can be found by measuring the time it takes for the dart to hit the wall. 
It may only last a few seconds, so be sure to keep your eyes open. Let's do it. So here's Mike firing the gun at 3 meters away so we can measure the time it takes for it to hit the wall and therefore calculate the velocity. I'll be timing. Ready Mike? At this point it's important to make sure you time it correctly so that when the dart hits the wall you get the precise measurement. Ready? One, two, three, fire. After you've found your values you'll need to use them in the formulas you have derived in order to find the distance you must fire at from a given angle. There are no major plots to be used in this lab. Only considerable amount of data collection will be finding the trials of time in order to calculate your velocity. However, there is a lot of data manipulation. I will go through this further when I manipulate the data to determine how far we need to fire from in order to hit the target at an angle of 40 degrees. We will now calculate the velocity. In order to do this, we will use the formula V equals D over T. We will then plug in the value for D, which is our distance, and is 3 meters. Next, we will plug in the value for our average time, which is 0 0.270 seconds. Once calculated, we will determine that the value for velocity is going to be equal to 11.11 meters per second. Next, we must calculate the height at which the dart will actually travel. We do this by doing the height of the ring stand, subtracted by the height of the dart at launch. The height of the ring stand is 53 centimeters, which will equal to 0.53 meters. The height of the dart at launch will equal to 0.2375 meters. Therefore, we subtract 0.53 meters by 0.2375 meters. Once done, we will find that the height of the dart while in the air will equal to 0.2925 meters. As Matt had calculated previously, our values for our horizontal velocity will equal to 8.512 meters per second, while our value for the vertical velocity will equal to 8.27 meters per second. Next, we need to find the time at which the dart was in the air. We will do this by using the formula y is equal to vy times t plus one half acceleration times t squared. We will first start by plugging in the value for the height at which the dart was while in the air. This will be 0.2925 meters. Next, I will plug in the vertical velocity, which was 8.27 meters per second. Since we do not know our time yet, we will plug in the variable T plus one half our acceleration, which will be gravity, which we all know is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. Since we still do not know our value for T, we will plug in the variable T and squared. From this, we can calculate 0.2925 meters will equal to 8.27 meters per second t plus 4.905 meters per second t squared. Next we calculate the 4.905 meters per second t squared minus 8.27 meters per second t plus 0.2925 meters. From here, we will use the quadratic formula in order to calculate our t value. After using the quadratic formula, in which this value will be represented as a, b, and c, we will determine that the time is actually equal to 1.087 seconds. Next, we must calculate the distance at which the dart must travel in order to hit the designated target. We can use the basic formula for velocity, v equals d over t. And from this, we can derive the equation dx is equal to dx over t. We have already found our values for velocity, which is 11.11 meters per second, and time, which is 1.087 seconds. All we need to do is plug in our values into the equation. Once we plug in velocity, we can set it equal to dx over the time. Once we calculate this, we will find that dx is equal to the velocity times the time, 
therefore equaling 12.06 meters. Then, using the x value you calculated, fire the gun at the distance at your given angle. Hopefully, it should hit the target. Make sure your gun is the proper distance away, in our case, 12 meters. And also, make sure the protractor is at a 40 degrees or whatever degree your teacher assigned you, so when you shoot, it's accurate. This problem is actually quite hard to solve, but you can get the hang of it using your hands and being precise. Take it away, Mike. It went in. I don't know nice. Judge, in conclusion, if your given velocity was found correctly and you used it well on your equations, you should get the proper distance you needed to fire away so that you could get the dart through the hoop. In order to find the velocity of the dart, we needed to find the distance traveled per second. Therefore, we devised a system to shoot the dart at a wall from a specific distance away. This specific distance, three meters, would give us one component, the meters, so that we could fire the dart and and see the time it took to reach the wall, giving us time in seconds as well as meters for distance. This specific distance, 3 meters, would give us one component, meters, so then we needed to fire the dart and see how long it took for it to reach the wall, giving us time in seconds. Then, we needed to divide the found values so we can get our velocity. Any error in this lab can be explained by inaccuracies in holding the gun, as well as using old or different darts or guns. This could explain the discrepancies in their firing. Also, it's difficult to measure the angle and then take the protractor away in order to shoot because the gun moves up or down a certain distance when you're taking away, leading to slight variations. This could be solved by creating an apparatus that holds the gun at a certain angle so it's not prone to moving before and after shooting. Now to Mike, who's going to tell us about the dart and the gun. Several errors may occur when collecting data within this lab. The main causes of these errors are the results of inconsistency. When it comes to using the same dart and gun, Basically, consistency is a must when conducting this experiment. Make sure to use a newly manufactured gun and the same dart for each trial. Uh, go. Shh. <laughs>